Hey, what's up? It's Jim, and today I'm going to talk about the worst movies of 2020. 2020. <laughs> like, what the f-, f Wow. Um, movie-wise, I did not get to see as many movies because it was hard to see stuff. It was hard to know what to see. It was weird. So, I probably don't have as many worst movies. So I have like three. So um, the first two are the two I found the most disappointing. I don't know if they're really the worst. Maybe they are, why not? I don't care that much, but the top three are definitely like worse. But I'm going to count down my top two most disappointing movies first. Um, so this is kind of worst and disappointing. Maybe the worst, maybe I should have called it the worst and disappointing of 2020 whatever anyway number two for the most disappointing movies of 2020 is mank um i think the thing with mank is that david fincher is a great director and this is very well filmed um but some of the issues i have with this film is that it's bringing up an argument that we do not really need someone to get into yet again who authored citizen kane especially when he famously shared his director credit card with cinematographer kind of leading you to believe that he was open to the fact that it wasn't just orson welles and we don't need to keep rehashing these arguments about auteur theory in 2020 like this is so annoying if you read 70s film criticism they go over like how bullshit auteur theory is and it's like i get it like i, I really get it um i made videos about it but um, I moved on with my life and that was 2016 and it's like this is just like please stop oh my god and there are way more interesting things to talk about Citizen Kane there are way more things to talk about with Herman Mankiewicz that you know they didn't need to invent for this movie but that's another thing what was the purpose of all this it's really boring it's really dry I like I don't like it that much I was just overly disappointed in Mank you would think a film directed by David Fincher about Citizen Kane would be really great, but it's really not. And my number one most disappointing movie is New Mutants. New Mutants was a story, you know, I made a video about it, uh, Shadow of the Demon Bear, uh, which is very personal about my connection to the storyline. But they basically just like, he, the director who claims to be a big fan of this and the uh, artist Bill Sienkiewicz um, sort of showed no respect for it and kind of made whatever movie he wanted to make, which was sort of like what if new mutants was nightmare on elm street which is like i'm not totally against but he did such a bad job with it i think it is probably one of the worst x-men adaptations although there's so many dark phoenix versions I, I i just felt like overall it's such a bad adaptation because he wasn't really concerned with capturing what made that comic special he was concerned with capturing his own dumb bullshit and if this was new mutants only chance that really angers me and makes me disappointed as a new mutants fan that he dropped the ball so terribly in making this there are certain decisions like the day musar rain sinclair kind of love relationship uh falling in love which i was i thought that was actually a good decision but um making danny moonstar the demon bear not the actual demon bear ruining the surrealism of that story and not really showing much regard for bill sinkevich while making a movie based on his work is just sort of insanely disappointing and um I, I don't think i'd really be interested in watching much by this director if this is how he chooses to adapt things so let's actually get into the worst now sorry those had to be in there oh i forgot to put uh dark phoenix from last year on on there so that can be number four why not i that's a bad movie i totally forget what happened in it other than it was the worst of the i think that was the worst of the x-men movies man x-men fox was not doing so good towards the end anyway that was bad you can watch that for you if you want so number three probably probably i think most people forgot that there was a norm of the north movie this year there was a 20 20 norm of the north movie so we cannot not talk about it which was norm of the north family vacation norm has to be on here somewhere of course and he is at number three it's norm of the north family vacation this is not the worst norm of the north movie which i think is either the first or the second but it is not good and i don't think norm of the north is getting good it might have had more functional people working on it but nothing about norm of the north is quote-unquote functional 
in terms of you know quality maybe plot it's like the stakes of this are weird because it's between like no stakes of him hanging out with his family and high stakes of the entire arctic will collapse if he doesn't get this crown back so it's like partly like what if we hung out and then, and you're also like hey norm be a fucking responsible adult you're a goddamn king is this a metaphor for leadership in general uh, no but it could be and we could read into that because this is just it's such a cliched boring plot and it's like clearly no one who works on it wants to make anything interesting out of it nor does splash entertainment and you could say this is just a nice family movie but i'm not showing like i had a choice i could have shown this to my kid but i respect my kid enough to never expose her to something as horrible as norm of the north exposure to the norm of the north is probably derailed my life in general so i don't think it's good to show someone who's like you know mind is growing you don't want to fuck with that just have some weird polar bear and stuff these are just very forgettably bad animated films and norm of the north just continues to chug along in his awful uneventful terribleness somehow and just keeps keeps going you can't stop norm unfortunately he is unstoppable he will continue to make terrible animated films and you wonder how are they even making money off of these or is this just a cruel experiment to see how long they can do this before someone shuts them down and i hope someone does i would be fine if it ended right here or if they did a monster trucks crossover which i'm sure everyone in the comments is gonna love i wish they would just completely be done but unfortunately it is not we're just gonna keep going and hopefully norm now that he's fan a balance with his family in the arctic can really find out who he really is but he probably won't and we'll just keep continuing going down the line of norm of the north movies and i'll keep reviewing them for as long as they make them norm is a perennial favorite i think every film in the norm of the north franchise has gotten on my worst list which is which is where it belongs to be. I welcome you, Norm. I, I would like more Norm of the North movies. We'll see about that. Number two, I think, was one of the big thuds of this year. And one that doesn't seem to catch on much beyond mulch diggums. And that was Artemis Fowl. Artemis Fowl is not a good movie. I think that's obvious to almost anyone who's seen it or generally got a whiff of its stench. It's not so bad it's good. It's not even so bad it's bad. It's just sort of there in its natural YA adaptation-ness. But it does still have Josh Gad unhinging his jaw, eating lots of sand, and then having the sand come out of his butt. So it does have that. But the whole movie isn't like butt sand. Just to be clear, there's other things to be bored with other than butt sand in this movie it sort of is a ya adaptation first in that sort of ya adaptation genre more than it's trying to make a good movie out of the story now i feel like most of the ya adaptation you know you have these big books and you make them into a movie and you know some of them become harry potter or hunger games and others become like whatever that cirque de freak was and like the one with the guy from solo in it Divergent. Yeah, it's like Divergent, sure. Divergent's like code for the crappier ones. They kind of have to explain the whole stupid world and gotta go, these are, these things are groggy logs. And they're like, oh, the groggy logs have been mysteriously hidden this whole fucking time or some dumb bullshit. And that's like all these movies, basically. And they did that, but it's with fairies and Irish folklore. And it really wants to sell that to you. It really wants to sell the idea of Irish folklore through this movie and it sort of doesn't really do that because it's doing it so much in this dumb ya thing it's like the typical studio big blockbustery kind of thing and it just never takes itself away from that i'm not going to say this movie is very memorable but that scene was and to my memory of seeing this movie that was pretty much the crux of the whole movie was watching josh gad do that gross shit it was like i think that was pretty much the you know, without that scene, the movie wouldn't make any sense or would have no reason to exist or have no reason to talk about because the rest of it is not as funny as int or as interesting as, as that. I think a lot of people will try to excuse this movie or overly uh, destroy it. Um, but I will say it's honestly not worth it. This movie is not interesting enough to even talk about. I'm having hard trouble filling material with it because like, ugh, like there's a guy named Butler. You can't call Butler. But he's a butler. It's kind of Hollywood movie that gets forgotten. 
that's what Artemis Fowl is. It's not interesting. It's not thought provoking. And it's done by people who don't give a shit. And number one, and I think it's fairly obvious. Yeah, I think it's fairly obvious this was going to be number one. Uh, it was the only one on this entire list that I actually saw in theaters, which feels even more embarrassing when I think about how I didn't get to see many movies in theaters in 2020, but I got to see this. And it was probably one of the big disasters of Hollywood in recent memory. And that was Doolittle. At number one, the worst movie of 2020. I think there are movies that are kind of bad that are enjoyable to watch. And then there's Doolittle. Which isn't even sort of semi-competent. I'd say it's probably one of the least competent Hollywood films I may have ever seen. It's just really badly made, really terribly acted from Robert Downey Jr. And this is a star vehicle for him that he produced that was edited around his performance, which is really awful. And it's just nearly unwatchable. And there's not many big Hollywood productions that are this just bad, bad, bad. And Doolittle is absolutely one of them. I was quite shocked at how bad this movie was. I'm also surprised because Doolittle, Dr. Doolittle was a famous bomb in the 60s and why anyone would think to remake it in a way similar to that and not in a way similar to like the Eddie Murphy one which like made money. Regardless of like the quality of that, it seems a little weird. Like why would you want to like do that? Like I don't understand. Like why would you whatever. It seems so wrong-headed on so many levels. Is only solo post Iron Man films have been like due date and the judge I know I said the judge and then this made like due dates the best one which is embarrassing and now we have this and the judge was bad this was bad I don't know why people let him produce things I mean he's pretty much famous for being Tony Stark and I get that but then in this like he's trying to be like an actor again and instead of like doing like just a clone of Iron Man, which to be honest, like I think this guy and Universal Studio released it, probably just need him to do at this point. He decides to do this weird, like what he calls a Welsh accent, but I'm not sure if it is or isn't. I don't know what that was that he was doing, but like it felt like the movie's like embarrassed that they have this terrible performance. And he's like whisper it's like so bad and like his english accent when he does that is pretty embarrassing but like this is like another level awful and it's probably like the worst i've ever seen him in a movie like i like totally forget like i liked him in a movie that came out like endgame was like not even a year ago i mean it's like maybe nine months or something but it was like it wasn't that long ago and i'm like already like like is this even the same actor you know he had like one of his big exits in film history and then we get to do little and he's just like so flubbing this up it both feels like irresponsible in terms of finances and just bad screenwriting i just don't know what they're thinking and i don't know how any of this is supposed to be like entertaining or work for anybody it just feels like just a mess of ugh, of like a huge budgeted kind of big fantasy film everything that's awful about those kind of things everything you didn't like and then it's awkwardly cut up and then i mean wow it it just it's it's really bad it's interesting when i just saw it and i was like man i think this is even worse than movies i've seen in other years like maybe i should correct my other worst list to put this at number one because it's just like unfathomably bad like it is so bad it is like it was hard to stay awake during parts of it it was hard to to be interested in it. It was just such a come down of a movie and come down not that I'd seen something before, come down in terms of like, I think like, you know, staring at my feet was a better experience. I, I think middle school for me was better experience in this movie. I didn't like middle school. There's so many things I can think of that are much more interesting in this movie because it is potentially one of the least interesting movies I have ever seen because it does not even want to be interesting while at the same time it's made and its whole structure to be a family film is a film to keep the, the weakest attention spans to pay attention constantly and this film can't even do that it, it like fails on so many like basic levels it's like watching someone fall down a flight of stairs and then they fall down another flight of stairs and then you 
where like there's another flight of stairs there and you're like this is just impressive that you just keep falling forever and ever your arms are definitely broken and this is horrific to watch and i wish someone would just put this out of its misery but i'm just gonna like continue to sit here and what's wrong with me why am i why am i doing this like why don't i go down and help them but then i gotta walk down the stairs and that's too much so i'm just gonna take a nap and then you you take a nap and you come back and you're like oh my god they're still falling down the stairs and like what building is this that i get this clear view of this person falling anyway the metaphor is this is a horrible movie so those were what i thought were the worst movies of 2020 um i didn't review mulan or see it and i frankly don't like watching those disney live action films and since i didn't have the time i'd much rather do other things so whatever don't care um maybe at some point someone will make me see it maybe i will i'm just trying to avoid it as long as possible because those movies are awful i saw the original mulan and i reviewed that just, just do that i don't need that negativity in my life Frankly, I can put up with Doolittle and Nor of the North all you want, but just Disney making live action versions of things. Just stay away. But regardless, those were the worst things I saw this year. I will have a best of the year eventually. It's kind of weird because most films that are thought of as 2020 movies, I haven't been able to see. I'm slowly catching up. I think that'll happen soon. But I figured my worst of the year, I don't think I'm going to get to see any other notable Worst of the year things. I haven't seen Malcolm and Marie yet, but that's a 2021 movie. So whatever. Anyway, I'll see you all later. I hope you enjoyed this list of the worst movies of 2020. I know it's always disappointing because I don't see enough things really, but this is really, I think these were, they, they were, I think there were some worst ones. And you forgot about Norm in the North. How many you did? In the comments, write an F if you forgot about Norm. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. Why don't you tell me what some of your worst movies you saw in 2020 were? Um, but thank you very much for watching. Thank you for sticking with me this past year. And subscribe if you would like to.